Okay, so let's get uh, started. Uh, my name is Noelia Dosil. I am uh, an innovation project manager in the Galicia food cluster. Uh, today's webinar will be run together with my colleague uh, Daniel Alvarez. Uh, he is the manager of the insights area also in the Galicia uh, food cluster. We have here among the attendees also uh, other colleagues uh, from the AFES uh, project. In, in other European uh, regions. So uh, first of all, uh, we wanted to introduce you very briefly uh, what uh, the AFES project is. So I'm gonna share my screen. So uh, uh, as you know, the purpose of uh, this webinar today is to uh, introduce you a, a few consumer market and innovation trends uh, which have been uh, identified through the development of uh, a report done in the uh, AFES uh, project by, by Clusaga. Uh, so what is AFES? Uh, AFES is a, a European project which is funded by the Interreg Atlantic Area Program. Uh, the project has been uh, working since March 2019 and uh, it will be uh, operational still until August uh, of next year. Um, the context of, of this project is uh, based on the common challenges that the Atlantic area regions face in terms of the food sector and mainly in terms of uh, the, the healthy food needs in, in this territory, uh, which have, of course, uh, uh, common uh, policies uh, and innovation uh, support programs uh, to try to foster the development of new uh, healthy food products. So in, in considering this, this common challenge, the objective of the project is to try to help uh, improving the competitiveness of companies, mainly SMEs, uh, related to healthy food, but also lifestyles, uh, and do that through the establishment of a transnational innovation ecosystem uh, that jointly uh, brings together services and training programs and other resources that help um, the SMEs in, in, in that path. Um, today, we would like to focus on the services. So here, uh, I will try to present, very briefly introduce you uh, the whole catalog of services that are available in the project uh, in the different regions. Um, we have um, structured the services in four blocks. Uh, uh, some of the services are more related with uh, providing intelligence to the companies, that intelligence uh, information that is helpful for your uh, innovation uh, actions. Uh, other services are more tailored and aimed to help you uh, to build uh, alliances and collaborations with other companies or uh, um, research and development centers uh, in your region or in different regions. Uh, and then we also have other services more related with business growth and internationalization. The um, report today is uh, done in the scope of a service we have focused on consumer and market trend reports. Um, you can access all this through the AFES uh, website. I have uh, left you here the, the link to the project. Um, the project will also develop some other trend reports that are more focused on uh, what is being uh, currently done at the research and development level, not yet in the market. Uh, so which uh, really research uh, results are there in universities, uh, technology centers that uh, we expect in the coming years will reach the uh, industry level. So the, this you will have in the R&D trends report. But uh, we also have a service aiming to uh, support the establishment of innovation uh, and I, alliances, mainly through different uh, events uh, to disseminate trends and uh, foster networking. Then you individually can request the support of the partners uh, to help you uh, develop your individualized uh, support innovation plans. And this is really tailored to the needs of the SMEs. You also can find throughout the website uh, a set of R&D funding calls in the different regions, but also a European level. So this is like a um, centralized uh, spot 
for uh, information on calls that uh, can be used to fund uh, R&D uh, healthy food projects. Uh, this third set of services in business growth are also tailored to, to companies. So some companies that request the service will receive the support of the project partners uh, to design and market, uh, sorry, to develop the design and marketing uh, strategies, to be introduced to new commercial partners in re your region or other regions that uh, fit your, your needs, uh, and also uh, the support of uh, AFES partner to um, review and guide you, providing recommendations uh, in the development of new business plans. Uh, and finally, there's uh, two types of services uh, related with internationalization through the de development of internationalization strategies and also uh, marketing intelligence that it uh, is, um, let's say, adapted to your uh, specific case. In addition to the services, uh, the AFES project also is developing a set of training programs, uh, four training programs, be more specific. The, the first training program is uh, encompassed of different modules related with consumer insight and market uh, understanding. Uh, this uh, training program is already available in the website, so you can access there the, the materials. And please, if you want to have more information, please contact the, the, the partners. Uh, in your region. Um, also, uh, we, are, we have recently uploaded the materials and modules uh, of training program two, which is focused on the uh, process throughout the product life cycle management. Uh, and in the coming weeks, you will also have available in the website the materials uh, related with uh, the training program three, which focuses on market development and four, which focuses on product development, critical, critical path uh, management. As I said, you have all this information in the website, so we kindly uh, invite you to, to go there and uh, navigate uh, the materials. Uh, but um, still, please, uh, you, you have, uh, let's say, a contact point uh, in your region that uh, I assume most of you are uh, familiar with and, and have uh, uh, already a contact established. The project is uh, led by the Galicia Food Cluster in the northwest of Spain, but we also have partners in Northern Ireland, uh, France, uh, Basque Country, Wales, Ireland, Portugal, and again, uh, Wales. So, um, sorry, I, I leave you here the, the, the contacts. Um, of the project, so the, the broader ones, but please get in touch with your uh, contact point to, to get more information about the project and how can it, how can it can benefit uh, you in, in your needs. So uh, this was all on my side. Uh, I would like now to invite my colleague, uh, Daniel Alvarez, uh, who will uh, introduce you the, the, the conclusions and main facts of this report developed by Cruzaga. <clears throat> Thank you, Noelia. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here, uh, attending to this webinar. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? Okay. Okay, so as Noelia mentioned, uh, today we are going to um, summarize the main uh, results in this uh, study about soft drink sector in 2021, consumer trends, market, and innovations. So our goal is to present market data, consumer preferences, and innovations in the soft drink sector, especially focused on health. The geographical focus uh, will be the other countries, so France, Ireland, Portugal, Spain, and United Kingdom. And we are going to, to, to present some data about sales volume, production, new products development, main positionings, consumer trends, and market uh, health claims. The categories of analysis uh, were waters, carbonates, and energy or stimulating drinks, drinks, concentrates, uh, mixes, and meal replacements, um, juices and juice drinks, and chill or iced coffee and tea. 
the main information sources were Innova database, to which we have access, Innova Market Insights and other databases uh, from Global Data or European Commission, uh, among others. And this is, uh, as uh, Nalia mentioned, second, this is the second report of a series of uh, consumer market and innovation trends. So first of all, we are going to have a look to the market. In Europe, the sales volume of soft drinks uh, were growing since 2014. Uh, with a accumulated growth of uh, 1.4, with a slight decline in 2019. The highest uh, sales uh, countries uh, per sales volume were Germany, Italy, and France, which accounts with a, around 50% of total sales in Europe. Um, the production value, value was about um, 54 billion euros, which uh, were 2.2 higher than the previous year. This was in 2019. And the total production, 130 billion liters, which uh, presented a, sl a small uh, decline comparing to the previous year. The main soft drinks producing countries um, in Europe uh, are Germany, Italy, and Spain, followed by UK, France, and Poland. Regarding per capita consumption, um, all of the countries in the AFES uh, region are slightly below to the European average, uh, as you can see in this graphic, which is about 250 liters per capita. Spain um, is, the, is the country um, which is the smallest of the average of Europe, followed by France, Portugal, UK, and Ireland. Regarding growth of sales, we can, we can observe, sorry, we can observe growth of sales uh, in the period 2014 to 2019, with a total production of uh, around 40 billion liters, which accounts for around 30% of the total sales volume in Europe. France is the main country regarding sales volume. Regarding international trade, we see that the UE supplied much of the international demand. The global exports um, reached uh, around 40 billion uh, dollars, and the United States is the top importer. Uh, or of um, um, European Union soft drinks. The next top importers are, are Switzerland, Japan, China, and Saudi Arabia. With regards to, re regards to import, the global import reached $39.7 billion, which was a little less than the previous year. And the United States uh, was the larger importer, importer with 16% uh, of the share. And in Europe uh, was Germany with 80% um, of the share. The main top brands globally are Coca-Cola, Red Bull, and Diet Coke, the, the top three. Now we are going to have a look to, um, to the new products, positioning and health claims uh, in Europe of uh, soft drinks. Juices and nectars are, is the main category, followed by carbonates and ice tea, ice or chill tea. And uh, we also observe growth in iced tea, energy drinks, or stimulating drinks, and iced coffee. Ice and chill, I'm going to use it indistinctively, as uh, not all the presentations are ice, but maybe it can be just, just chilled, right? So just uh, for you to know that this category uh, merged both categories. Regarding positioning, so the main one is uh, ethical packaging, followed by uh, convenience packaging. And also convenience consumption is uh, some on the top ones. So on the go drinks and a lot of, um, um, there's a, an emphasis in sustainability, in um, organic um, bio and uh, recyclable uh, um, um, labels. Uh, these are common. And uh, as you see, it's one of the main trends. But also we have to pay attention that um, Convenience is, uh, is a, a clear growing, growing trend. So um, sustainability together with uh, convenience are uh, the two main positionings uh, among, uh, among the market. If we focus on health claims, no additive uh, or preservatives is the main position followed by gluten-free and low, no or reduced calories and then organic. And the growing trends are low, no reduced calories, organic, and strongly sugar-free. 
in other countries, United Kingdom um, is the main uh, country regarding new product development. And the main, um, the main category among the other countries, like uh, same like Europe, are juices and nectars, followed by carbonates and drink concentrates and mixes. Okay, so if we pay attention to uh, health claims uh, more in detail and per country, we observe that no additives, preservatives, and no added sugar in other countries are the main um, health claims. And there is several uh, uh, claims which are growing, such as uh, no added sugar, low, no reduced calories, gluten-free, or sugar-free. We can see here some examples. So just uh, for you to go qu quickly through the, through the table, the ones that present um, an asterisk are the, the growing trends, okay? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight for you uh, to facilitate, uh, for me to facilitate, facilitate to, to you the, the comprehension of this graphic. So just pay attention to what I'm going to highlight, okay? Uh, so we here are some examples about, for example, a smoothie with no added sugars in Spain, cappuccino coffee drink with almond drink with zero preservatives, or in Portugal, this kombucha with zero sugar and zero calories. Among the top trends, we see a strong positioning of health and immune system. So immune health is among the key health trends in 2020 and beyond. And there is an increase of consumption of functional drinks. The pandemic, or, or because of the pandemic, there was a prioritization of immune health and a rise in immune health marketing positions, for example, with beverages uh, with high nutrients or antioxidants that support the immune health, for example, vitamin A, zinc, or vitamin C. One out of three consumers globally say that their concerns about immune health have increased in 2020 over 2019. Here we have some examples, for example, in UK, uh, this carbon drink with zinc, uh, and the claim is that um, it contains strength vitamins to support a healthy immune function. For example, this smoothie in France, rich in vitamins C and B6, which helps the normal functioning of the immune system. This other example in Ireland, um, this uh, carbonate drink that boosts the immune uh, response because um, of its content uh, consisting of a blend of vitamins and minerals. And also they claim that they add ashwagandha plant, uh, which I'm going to talk about this later. And this other example in Ireland, uh, this frozen smoothie high uh, in vitamin C and vitamin A to support the immune system. Second trend is clean label and sustainability. So beverages with natural ingredients and a short uh, list of ingredients are uh, popular. There's an increase uh, in local foods, orange fo origin foods, and also um, a meaningful, meaningful storytelling is appreciated to meet a uh, devolving uh, trend of label consumer uh, demand. This is an example in Spain, uh, this apple juice, 100% ecologic, which like, made out of 100% of ecologic fruit from Navarra, from the Navarra, Navarra region, and no additives. So there is a growth of 12% in food and beverages um, claim uh, related to sustainable sourcing of farming globally. For example, this is an example uh, of a ginger ale um, from organic European farming and packaging optimization to respect the environment. So both major companies and smaller SMEs are releasing and startups are releasing beverages designed to minimize environmental impact. Also, the, the, the awareness of the consumers towards sustainability has driven the companies to more sustainable methods and environmentally friendly ethics. And some brands are increasingly looking for innovative ways to utilize food waste to produce new beverages, uh, beverage products. For example, these drinks, uh, this sparkling uh, water uh, drink in the UK, which uh, has been made uh, for the reduction of food waste uh, by means of using uh, wonky fruits and misfits. So according to an Innova uh, survey 2019, um, more and more consumers will consider a sustainable or more ethical alternative 
over a conventional product. The third trend is uh, improved mood health. So the care of brain health and mental health has opened new potential uh, for supporting well-being and cognitive uh, as well as mental, mental health. And beverage companies are innovating with the new ingredients to manufacture products with functional benefits. For example, uh, you have here two, two examples in UK and France. Uh, the first uh, example is a sparkling water infused with ginseng, uh, which uh, they say is kind to the mind. And this other example in France with this iced tea, which helps uh, to reduce the tension, anxiety, stress, and nervous agitation. So many consumers turn towards healthier options uh, to tackle extra stress, especially produced uh, by the pandemic. For example, there's a growth in food and beverages launches, uh, tracked with adaptogens. As you can see here, this example in the United Kingdom, uh, this tonic water with uh, CBD for its well-being enhanced properties. Cannabinoids, right? So there's also a trend which consists of the reformulation for less calories. There's an increasing demand of consumers uh, and pressure by the authorities uh, for the creation of sugar reduced versions, as you can see here, sugar and calorie free carbon drinks, tonic water with zero calories, sugar free sparkling drinks, or other carbonates uh, with sweeteners. And the fifth trend is the fusion of global ingredients. So the availability of information globally, the easy access uh, to ingredients, the consumer awareness uh, for health, and the fusion which uh, the globalization enable us has open access to novel ingredients uh, with uh, various benefits and functions. Uh, for example, trendy ingredients are the ones listed in this table here, for example, botanicals such as turmeric or ginger, uh, sorry, botanicals or roots, uh, for example, um, turmeric, ginger, hibiscus or rose, other toxins like CBD, L-theanine or ashwagandha, and other popular flavors like elderflower, elderberry, yuzu or black currant. Here you have some examples, uh, this turmeric and lemon juice in France, or this juice flavored tonic water in Spain, or this ginger turmeric and cayenne flavored kefir soda in the United Kingdom. If we have a look to the categories, especially, well, starting, uh, sorry, uh, by waters. We see that waters presented a stable uh, growth, uh, even with a slight decline. And the main category in waters will be flavored uh, waters in other countries. The main uh, health claims are natural and no additive preservatives. What we observe uh, also a growth in uh, low, no, or reduced calories or sugar free, for example. Here are some examples. Um, you can see, for example, uh, uh, examples of natural and no preservatives um, claims. Uh, for example, this uh, water in France, uh, which is natural, or this other sparkling water used with cucumber, I mean, uh, and lime, and no artificials, United Kingdom, or this other example in Portugal, uh, red currant flavored sparkling natural mineral water. And also um, other examples of waters with passive health claims, for instance, lime flavored water with zero calories, or this other mint uh, flavor, natural mineral water, which is calories free in Spain. We take a look to carbonates and energy or stimulating drinks. We see that this category is growing, um, on the, was growing among the period 2016, 2020. And um, here we have an example, right? With um, this sparkling uh, drink, in this case with CBD in France. The main uh, claims uh, among other countries are low, no reduced calories and no additives preservatives. We pay attention to the growth. We see that uh, low calories is uh, increasing, is growing, sugar free, and also no added sugar. And this is this happens in almost all the other countries. 
as well as in Europe in general. Those are examples. For example, no additive preservatives is one of the most popular claims, as I mentioned, in other countries. For instance, this carbonated lemon lime soft drink with no preservatives and colorings in Spain, or this organic carbonated pomegranate drink with no preservative color or artificial flavor in France. And other examples, for example, low in calories and sugar-free, which are recurrent uh, and growing claims such as this uh, sparkling black island or this apple flavored carbonated soft drink with fruit juice uh, with no sugar added. Um, and also uh, this sparkling passion fruit and vanilla flavored energy drink with zero sugar. Sorry, I think the connection was, was uh, bad, but now, now it's working, right? So this other category is the drinks, uh, the drink concentrates, mixes, and meal replacements. And this is a category which presents a, a strong growth. Um, and uh, you can see here an example of this acai, acai pits apple and ginger lunch uh, shake in the United Kingdom. The main categories are, so sorry, the main claims are no additives, preservatives, and gluten-free among other countries. And this is a category which presents a lot of different claims which are growing. For example, no additive preservatives. This is growing in almost all other countries. Gluten-free, likewise. Organic, likewise. And high source of protein, which grows in all other countries. Also high soft, uh, or source of fiber is also a growing trend. Examples in this category, for example, this high source, high ore source of protein, uh, which is a claim present in all African countries, as I mentioned. Uh, in United Kingdom, this is a coconut flavored milk, uh, sorry, milk drink, uh, high in protein. Gluten free, as I mentioned, also is a growing claim. This is a gluten free, ready to drink meal, uh, drink, meal drink, sorry, with vanilla flavor in France. Organic and no additives, preservatives are growing claims, also as I said before, and those are examples in Ireland and Portugal, an organic spirulina powder mix for smoothies or this energized smoothie mix with no additives, preservatives. Sorry, no additives added. And also other products with uh, health claims, for instance, this uh, shake with coconut, almond and chai, uh, low in salt and sugars in the United Kingdom. Next category is juice and juice drinks, which is the, uh, the, the most prominent category in Europe and other countries. This is a category which presents uh, stable stability, market stability. And the main uh, health claims are no added sugar and no additives or preservatives. Claims that are growing are no added sugar and vitamin mineral fortified. Here are some examples. For example, these two juices with, with no added sugar. First one in the United Kingdom, uh, cold pressed sweet and sour apple juice. And the second, uh, um, grapefruit juice uh, in France with no added sugar. Other um, claims uh, are organic, natural, and no additives, preservatives, which are among the most popular in other countries. For example, these. Um, this juice cold press carrot apple and uh, with orange uh, ginger and lemon which is organic with no preservatives or this other example in portugal of uh, grape juice which is organic and presents no flavorings or any coloring also these portions and flashes Next category is chill ice coffee and tea, which is a category which presents strong growth. And um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, iced tea uh, presents more new uh, products development uh, than iced coffee, but both categories are growing. 
Um, mainly, the main uh, so the main uh, claims are organic and no additives preservatives, but there's several growing trends like organic, especially in France, uh, gluten free, and also natural. Those are some examples. Uh, for instance, um, this organic kombucha with mandarin flavor in Spain, organic cafe latte in Portugal, or this green tea used to and bitter orange botanical tea drink with no artificial flavors or sweeteners. Other passive health, health are, for example, no added sugar, like this uh, mocha ice coffee in the United Kingdom, or this organic raspberry and hibiscus flavored black tea infusion, which is low in calories uh, in France. So what are the main conclusions of this study? The soft drink, drink uh, drinks industry has shown consistent growth. In other countries, France leads sales volume and Spain, the production and per capita consumption. Juices and nectars is the category with the most innovation followed, followed by carbonates and ethical packaging and convenience are the main position and strategies. Also, there's a strong presence of passive health claims and bioactive ingredients. And also the strong presence of natural products with no additives or preservatives. So in summary, there's a great scope for innovation of healthy products in the, sorry, in the soft drink sector, like ready to drinks products uh, with an ethical packaging and natural ingredients, blends or traditional of traditional flavors with bioactive ingredients as well as mood regulators for a more personal experience. Thank you very much for attention. And we open a I believe there was some sound problem. Now, we, in the end, um, but uh, in summary, we move now to the Q and A part of the of the session. So, uh, I suppose some of you might have questions or aspects that uh, you would like Daniel to clarify. So you can. Uh, raise John. your hand and I give you the, the word. Mr. Stanton. Sorry, was someone <laughs> it's just That must be. Plus one. Um, or you can also use the chat if you prefer. So maybe it would be myself to break the ice. Uh, so, uh, Daniel, I, I was wondering if maybe you can uh, explain a bit. Uh, uh, you, you presented different categories of, of products. Which ones you would say are, are the, the ones that have the highest potential uh, for SMEs to innovate? Yeah, thank you, Elia. Um, so there's, there's three categories which presents uh, a clear gro growth, which are carbonating and stimulating drinks, uh, drinks uh, concentrates, or which uh, a meal replacement. So basically, this would be shakes and mixes, uh, which presents um, um, a, a, a strong growth, but especially um, chilled uh, uh, coffee and, uh, and tea. So these three categories um have great potential i would say the category of drink concentrates shakes mixes etc is interesting because there is a lot of growing claims which means that uh, this is a very active category so i will mention this three and of course uh, never forgetting juices which is the main one uh in general uh it's the main the main uh, category with more let's say with more uh, new products development. So maybe this four will be interesting um, and paying attention to, to this trend of uh, immune system health. So the use of bioactive functional ingredients, uh, which are calling the attention of, uh, of consumers. And also, of course, pay attention to sustainability and more natural products with, uh, with less additives. So this could be a good conclusion. Sustainability, 
uh, by active or functional ingredients and um, um, and pay attention to 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 those uh, immune health and and and, um, and mental health uh, boosters. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so we have a couple of questions uh, of some participants in the chat. So first of it from Miss or Mister Castellano, I don't know. Uh, how do you consider no alcohol wine? Uh, how do you think it should be categorized? Okay, okay so this is interesting because uh, we had um, recently um, a webinar specializing uh, no or low alcohol drinks. So I would say this could be considered a new category, no low drinks, uh, which comply not only wine, but also beer and some liquors. So uh, this will not enter in soft drinks, but separated. There is a webinar which was really interesting about that. I think this is uh, um, available, right? So Daniel is here close to me, but he's wait, wait, having wait. some some sound issues. So just wait a second. We will make a switch here. No, no, no. Uh, so, well, let, let's try again. Uh, so, with regard to no uh, or low uh, alcohol drinks, such as the case for wine, there is a webinar that has been done in AFES. You have the recording for those of you that might not have participated in that webinar. You have the um, recording in the, in the website. So we invite you to go there and uh, well uh, revisit the, this uh, this webinar. Uh, we also have now a question from uh, Geraldine Marshall. Do you see a significant growth growth of drinks uh, with the label organic? Yeah. So yeah. So actually, it's interesting because uh, especially in France, the organic claim is pretty prominent. And um, I, I can go back because I remember that, that there was a particular growth of, uh, if I'm not wrong, um, chill and iced tea, um, chill and, and uh, chill ice tea and coffee uh, in France. So actually, I would say, let me go back to this. If you, yeah, okay, if you take a look, take a look here in organic. So first column in France. Uh, this is the main positioning, uh, the, the main claim in France, and it's a growing trend. So definitely, definitely, this will be a category uh, uh, for organic uh, in France, especially on your question. I like to highlight this category especially. Um. Oh, so Pablo Martin uh, was uh, following the interventions and discussions about the low uh, alcohol wine. Uh, he was asking if this is mosto, if no alcohol wine is, is mosto. I don't think it's ex exactly the, the same, so it right. might not be considered in the juice nectar category. Exactly. So, so there's, a, <clears throat> there's a whole a new category which uh, basically so the idea is to produce a wine so with with a taste uh, the most similar the better to wine uh, with, with no alcohol so will be not let's say the not the raw material which are, is fermented uh, afterwards to produce wine but wine itself with no alcohol so i, I will i will separate these two categories most of could be considered a, a grape uh, juice actually that's right but uh, I, I will, I will, I will differentiate these two, these two products. Yeah, no low drinks, so which will be no or low alcohol wine, and also in a separate category, the, the grape juice, which actually is what most is basically non fermented, non non fermented uh, grapes, so to speak.
who's next? Any other question? Yeah, we have a question from Harry Hamilton, our colleague from uh, Northern Ireland Food and Drink Association. Uh, have you much evidence of the smaller companies making inroads into the market or is it dominated by the larger manufacturers like Coke? Yeah, that's interesting because yeah, because um, many examples uh, doing so of products with with a lot of innovation belongs to small companies. So they have that can probably compete with the with the with the big uh, brands. But uh, most of the examples I showed uh, belong to I would say to small companies which are doing great job for innovation. So I will say, yeah, um, the, the market is still dominated by larger manufacturers, manufacturers, but there's a lot of innovation going on uh, in SMEs as well. But particular, particular brands uh, in specific countries, uh, I'll have to do some research. Uh, I cannot uh, tell you now, but it might be interesting to, to maybe to categorize also this, the, the SMEs doing more innovation in this uh, direction, definitely. And uh, well, I think we are reaching the, uh, the end of the time we had today, so we will take our last uh, question. This case from Alison Hasselbrook, uh, of Big Innovation in, in Wales. Uh, and the question is, uh, if you have seen any particular trends uh, in terms of affecting mood uh, drinks, uh, maybe sleep or energy or relaxation, how is this trend going? This is interesting. Um, I'll, go, I'll go back to, to my presentation a second. I will bet for, for relaxing and calming uh, after because most of these drinks and the claims, uh, they mentioned the pandemic and the stress. So I, I will bet more for uh, relaxation, more than uh, energy. What we have observed, so what I, what I have observed is some, um, some ingredients uh, which claim to be better for the cognitive, the, the cognition. So not, not for energy, but cognition. But I will bet more for, um, for relaxation. Of course, I can give you more I could do some some more on that, but if you, for example, pay attention to, to the one I present now regarding improved mood health. So all these three examples are related to a relaxation reduction of tension, a kind to the mind, feeling good. Yeah. So I will say uh, this is more trendy than energy boosting, which uh, maybe is covered by energy and stimulant drinks. Yeah, but I I'm going to separate energy and cognition because uh, these are two paths which, which go somehow separate. So cognition, let's say, from energy and stimulant drinks. Yeah, but uh, to, to answer your question, I will bet more for a reduction of stress, anxiety, calming down. And actually, some of the ingredients. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for, for your questions, for your attention. Uh, uh, I hope this uh, webinar has been useful for uh, you to have a few new insights in, in this segment of uh, food and drinks uh, products. Uh, you will, as said in the chat, you will have uh, the recording, presentation and report in the project website, so you will have access to, to everything. Uh, uh, still, if you have any questions or you want additional information, please uh, shoot us a, a, an email uh, or contact your, uh, or the organization in, in your region and we will be more than, than happy to, to help you. So. Nothing more. Thank you very much for uh, being here and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.